Hiya, fishy folks. I'm here with Callie Parker, who is the president of Bucks County Aquarium Society and a fish nerd and works for API. Say hi. Hello. How are you guys doing? So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? How long have you been keeping fish? So I've been keeping fish um, oh, probably 15 years now. So for like, since she's been four. Go ahead. <laughs> you maybe do math. <laughs> I'm not that young. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was uh, uh, fell victim to the same sort of Martha Stewart beta vase oh. phase. So I went to a wedding. Um, they were the centerpieces. And so I, I ended up with that centerpiece with the beta and the plant on top and uh, quickly learned that that was bad. Very, very bad. Did the beta survive? The beta did survive oh. somehow. Uh, we did eventually learn to feed it. Okay. So, so it made it after that. Um, but that poor beta, because I think it got like 100% water changes. So, so you say beta. <laughs> yeah. Some people say beta. What's right? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Well, it makes two of us. <laughs> I, I don't know. Beta, as as beta, long as you can tomato. tell what I'm talking about, yeah. that's fine. All right. Say it with confidence. And it's a beta. It's like a beta. I don't know. It's a water purifying thing. So you've been keeping fish for a while. Mm hmm And tell us about Bucks County Aquarium Society. Okay. So Bucks County Aquarium Society um, is the aquarium society within Bucks County in Pennsylvania. Um, we have probably at each meeting we have we have thirty or forty people um, in attendance. Each month we have a speaker. Uh, and that usually goes around an hour with different topics depending on what people like and, and what's kind of hot nowadays as far as that goes. Um, and then we do a meeting auction each time and that allows us to kind of, you know, spread the love as far as the different fish that everybody's keeping. Um, and then we do different events. Like, were you a part of the Fish Cash Rally at all? I was not. Okay, so it was basically a shop hop that we incentivized by giving away cash. Nice! <laughs> cash to each of the uh, the sponsors that we visited. I think nice. we visited like four of them and just did raffles and had a really good time. We've also done uh, different visits to aquariums. Uh, we've done behind the scenes tours at some of them. And it, it's always a good time because then you have a bunch of fish nerds that all know what they're, they're talking about and then you just release them into their native habitat and they just go. It's, it's a wonderful sight to behold. Sounds hold. like fun, and I missed it. Uh, we'll have to go again. Okay. We're, we're still planning the next um, trip, so I'm not quite sure which aquarium we're hitting this year. I'm going to miss the picnic this year. No! I fly to Japan that day. Okay. So, so July 28th, if anyone wants to come out, uh, that's a very informal kind of meeting. There will be a raffle for members and also a non-member raffle which will basically be membership and goodies so if you're not a member you can win and become a member and and everything will be good you know after that if you're anywhere within two hours of bucks county you should become a member i'm at least yes. an hour away and i don't make many meetings because it's an hour away but i always go to the auction you hear yes. me talk about the auction, it's the best auction ever. That's correct. It, it's it, very it true. It just is. That's yep. just how it is. And you're president. Yes. El Presidente. Madam President. Oh, <laughs> Madam Presidente. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been president? So I'm in my second year. So it's it's been a year and a half, basically, at this point. Are they two-year terms or four-year terms? The it, It's election every year at, in the December meeting. So they picked me twice. Wow. So you must be doing something right. I hope, <laughs> I guess. Uh, first year, I, I basically kind of just kept it constant. Uh, this year, I've been trying to do changes to make everything run more smoothly, um, and I think it's working. I think uh, we have a really good group of people. You know, not only myself, but my board is amazing, and and we do a lot. So. So you guys know I go to a lot of local fish club auctions and I try to go to a lot of meetings and you've heard me talk about Bucks County. It's my favorite because from the minute I got there for the first time I felt like family. Mm -hmm. And so this time I came out extra early to help set up and stuff. 
I got a cool shirt, and you know, it was cool. It was fun. That's yeah, always fun. That's definitely our reputation. We're, we are known as one of the friendlier clubs, Very and friendly. we are aware of that, and we try and do what we can to, you know, continue with that. Um, because I, I think that's important, especially with getting people into the hobby. You, you just need to be there and be friendly because they need support and they may not know how to ask for it. And families as well are seeing like an uptick in actually families coming out and younger children coming out, which I love. Yeah. So that's very good right now. I always help the, my, my subscribers that are young and other uh, YouTubers that I know that are young, I always try to help them out as much as I can. It's mm -hmm. very important, I think, for the hobby. Oh yes, very, very important. I was actually um, at one of our younger members' house last week, or the week before. Uh, he had a, a fish come down with, I'm not going to say it wrong, is it cam Camelanus worms? Or in, is the, it... in the guppy world, we just say red worm. Oh, them red word worm things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he had a, a tank full of those, and so I know that it can be tough to measure that out. And I have a scale. I'm not going to expect a younger member to know that he needs a scale, know what medication he needs, know how to measure it and dose it and whatever. He has this problem. I can help with that problem. I'll just go. I have it on hand. So Might as well. what did you dose with? Levamisole. Levamisole? Yeah. And how much do you dose per gallon? So, uh, that dosing so weird. Because I've seen it both um, pretty high and low. I, I think the... Um, Effective target is two parts per million, but a lot of dosing is higher than that, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what's right on that and what's not. I just know that the higher dose hasn't killed anything, but also the lower dose has worked. Okay, so when I had uh, worms, I asked uh, Corey from Aquarium Co-op what to do. He said get Levamisol from Greg Sage. And so I did, and Greg basically told me, you know, dose this amount. I can't remember what it is, but he said, if you overdose, it's not going to hurt anything. That's what he told me. Okay. So. I think the dosage I used was 5 grams per 100 gallons, and then scaled down. Right, right, right. From there. But I think uh, with uh, my friend Jackie's tank, she has a, a 260, and I only put 3 grams in there, and that worked. So it, it's really strange. Yeah, yeah. As far as that goes. Okay. For, I, further study is necessary to dial <laughs> dial it in, I guess. And you guys know I don't do anything scientific, so <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. Okay. So why did you run for president, or were you asked to be president, or how'd that work? Well, I was on the board already, and I was finding myself just kind of doing things anyway. And, and the time came when it, essentially someone needed to step up, and so I did. You know, um, I didn't have any like lofty aspirations or anything. I just saw that that position needed to be filled. I was already doing a bunch of work. I figured, why not slap the title on it? Okay. And so you get all the pay and benefits. And oh everything. yes, yes. Yeah. Hundred yeah, yeah. <laughs> percent volunteer. Yep. Definitely. So. I have a question to ask you. Uh, I mentioned Cora from Aquarium Co-op, and I was on a live stream of his maybe a year and a half ago, and he asked me a question. Mm -hmm. You have to breed a fish, save a fish, and kill a fish. So if you breed it, you keep it, and oh, all you, you do is breed you, it. Out of three, you mm -hmm. know, you can do the choice. Okay, so what do you and, got? And and then save a fish. Obviously, you make sure it stays alive. And kill a fish. No more in the hobby. Okay. Your turn. So, as far as, you know, I choose or you, you give me you, options? You choose. Which fish would you breed, which fish would you save, and which fish would you kill to get out of the hobby? I'd kill a parrotfish. Parrotfish? I can't. I'm All sorry. Right. I can't stand their faces. They don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen them eat? Uh, they, no. They, they kind of scoop it up. They, their, their faces don't work. I don't know. It makes me sad. Okay. <laughs> Parafish. Bye bye. Yeah. Um, as far as save, so what is what differentiation between save and keep? So so. Keep a fish. Yeah. And breed a fish. 
Okay. So what fish would you breed? Um, it's gonna have to be one of the killifish. Ooh, um... You could just say killifish. Okay, you don't want the scientific names? Well, you could say the scientific name and... And, and, the, and, and the they watch will go like, right over their that's heads. That's right. My head. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't even have a common name. I could try. I, I'll, I'll... Just say killifish. Killifish. Okay. See? Yep. Killifish. Okay. Ahead. And? And so... Keep a fish. Keep a fish. Pencils. They're nice. Okay. All right. I don't know if I, I, I breed them, but like I, I just like how chill they are in like a planted tank. Cool. All right. So, fish nerd, mm -hmm. president mm -hmm. of your local fish club, mm -hmm. and you have a pretty cool job. Yes, I love what my do job. What do you do? So, I work for API, yeah, Aquarium Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, uh, located in Chalfont, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'll phrase it this way. Uh, so, API has done their homework. They figured out that beginners in the hobby are all purchasing tanks that are under 10 gallons, basically. 10 gallons and under. And they either kind of stick with or break away from the hobby within probably the one to six month range. That is make or break time. My job, how I see it, is to get them through that period. Uh, because our number is on the back of every bottle, every container. So it, between myself and one, as, one other associate, we manage that phone line, all the emails, all the Facebook inquiries, um, and some other random like review stuff. Uh, and we will basically be there when the hobbyist first has their, their first problems a lot of the time they kind of knee-jerk reaction oh I need a medicine and they call for like directions and stuff and then we kind of walk back through oh hey you know what's your ammonia what's going on this is actually what's probably going on and this is how you can fix it or see it and then we basically walk them through that period where they're most you know liable to fail basically that's probably very rewarding and very frustrating at the same time. Yes. Um, it's very rewarding when they understand and want to learn. And I love that. I will sit and I will talk to them and I will teach them everything about the nitrogen cycle. Um, and I, I love that. The only downside is you do get people who do not want to learn or don't, under, like, don't understand that they need to learn to keep the fish. And uh, so it can be frustrating at times when you run into that. Yeah. I. I go through phases on Facebook. I want to help people, then I just want to smack people, then I want to help people, then I want <laughs> And that, that's probably not a very good outlook, but that's just how I am. I always want to help people, but sometimes I, I want to give them a little smack too. <laughs> <laughs> While helping them. Exactly. Yeah, no, I just want to smack them. I don't want to help them. Aww. It's good that you go through phases then. That's, you can cycle true. back around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just leave this here until I, <laughs> I come back around. So what kind of fish do you like to keep? I very much like my killifish. Um, in general, I like anything that is going to stay under an inch or under an inch and a half. Once it gets a little bigger, I kind of lose interest. But that's mostly because I have my five gallon tanks and my 10 gallon tanks and that's what I got. That's they can't it. They can't outgrow that. If they do, they're not staying here, they get resold. Okay, all right. So uh, we'll be doing a fish shelf because it's not a fish room, it's a fish shelf tour. It uh, takes up most of the room. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> In another video, so you'll have, to, right. you'll have to see that exactly another time. So, let's see, what else? So, running a fish club, mm -hmm. what's involved? Like, is it is it difficult? Um, I imagine it's time consuming. Right, so, you know, we get there at the meeting, we do all the setup and stuff. You know, I also have to make sure, hey, do we have the forms? Did, did I print them? Do we do we have them? Are they organized? Do I have pens? <laughs> do I have all the things? Uh, my whole top row of my fish shelf is actually just club stuff. Oh. And then I have a, a pile back here that you probably can't see. Um, there's a lot of piles. There's there's a lot of piles, and I apologize, but it's it's a lot. It's all fish stuff. It's, it's pretty much all fish stuff. Um, so it's a lot of carting things around. It's a lot of making sure we have the tools that we need to run the meeting. Um, 
and just being accountable for fixing things <laughs> if, if anything should go wrong. Uh, and there is our monthly board meetings as well. Um, and that's something to know if, if you're a member, uh, because the board meetings are open. So anyone can can stop by and potentially eat pizza, <laughs> I love pizza. <laughs> if they want. Uh, and that's how we, we basically run it. You know, we have myself and the board, and we just talk out things and make sure that we agree on what's best for the club and what sort of things that we want to get into and support. Okay. All right, one last question. What is the worst thing you've ever done in a fish tank? It's not technically in a fish tank, but it's regarding a fish. Does that count? Okay. So I had this quarry cat, and it was not doing well. And I made the decision that I was going to euthanize this quarry cat. Um, so I believe I did anesthetize it with clove oil, and I was going to give it the chop. Uh, however, I did not account for how the quarry cat was armored. And so it took a few tries, and I traumatized myself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I was in the bathroom trying to do it, and someone like actually needed the bathroom, and I was just like kind of freaking out. <laughs> it was probably seven years ago. Wow. All right, well, anything else you want to say before we uh, finish? Um, I mean, I, I could always do a shameless plug of the Keystone Clash, because that's coming up in the fall, uh, and that is a very large and fun uh fish show basically so all you fish nerds if you are within driving distance I, I believe it's around Harrisburg um, go ahead check it out there's gonna be a lot of fish on display there's gonna be killifish this year which I'm super excited about because I'm actually running that portion me too <laughs> you're not running that portion no I but was you are excited. gonna come I am gonna come you are gonna come because it's all shaky I guess um, <laughs> but I, I love that uh, event I've gone the last two times and the auction is quite large as well so even if it's not you know if you don't particularly like looking at fish which I don't know why you'd be in the hobby if you didn't uh, come for the auction because that's uh, all the fish that go through the show you know some of them don't go home uh, especially the killifish any of the mail entries mail in entries will go to the auction so that's very, that's an opportunity basically to get some nice rare killifish, which you might not otherwise be able to get. Yeah, so the Keystone Clash, uh, is this year Scott is running it? Um, Scott's been helping. I, I don't know about, like, if he's on, on top as far as running it, because it's basically Lancaster and Cichlid Club of York. York, yeah. Yeah. So they they combined and then there's just a group of us because I'm part of it too. Like I went um, to the hotel and I actually tested all the water because that's not something that I've seen done for a fish show. Yeah. I was like, why not? I have the tools. So if you go to the Keystone Clash website, there's actually a little section where you can like click and see all the water parameters. That's so you cool. can actually acclimate your fish ahead of time, which is I thought it was neat. So acclimate, acclimate. Just put them in the tank. They'll be fine. Yeah, with some fish. That's what I do. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're All right. the, the expert here. Well, not really. But anyway, <laughs> I play one on TV. Yay. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Oh, you're very welcome. And uh, fish room tour, fish shelf tour. Impending. Coming up soon. That was fun. Cool. <sighs> Relatively painless. Yeah, I told you it would be. Oh, now she's dropping stuff. <laughs> Ow! This couch is jacked up. <laughs> we're we're this both is doing great. great. <laughs> so you know, this is going in the in the video because it's bloopers. Oh no. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can hear it. <laughs> oh, gee. <sighs> um, are you worried about the mic picking up the bubbles? No. Okay. It's a fish room. If okay. If you're oh. not worried, I'm not worried. You survive this time. Yeah. Okay. Should I lean in? Should I lean in? What am I doing? Yeah, let's okay. be comfortable. Alright. 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 Ready? Cool.